Welcome everyone to the Better Love Movement podcast, where you will finally learn how to intentionally do dating and relationships right. My name is Anita Stoudmeyer, and I'm a licensed professional therapist and your personal love mentor. I've worked with thousands of singles and couples, giving them the skills needed to attract and keep the amazing love they desire. It's my heart's work to help people to get the skills needed to not only become the very best versions of themselves, but to help them grow and evolve emotionally and relationally. You can absolutely have the romantic relationship of your dreams. Come and let me show you how. Hey everybody, it's Anita with Better Love Movement, and today we are in episode 49. It is entitled, Why is it so hard for us to grow and change? So, I am really passionate about this subject, and that's because the personality that I have, um, I'm a little bit of a geek, I'm a little bit of a nerd, And I love all things scientific. I love all things about like studies and how things work and all the science behind different things and why people do what they do. I love all of that. I love a good assessment. Oh my gosh, I get sucked in online taking these assessments. Um, You know, I I have to know what my uh, Kersey temperament score is and I need to know my Enneagram, you know, I get sucked into all this stuff, right? I love, love, love learning. I love learning about myself and learning about other people and growing like that's my thing, right? So I'm really passionate about this subject and I'm going to try to make this episode relatively short today, Um, but I'm really passionate about this subject and we're going to apply this stuck feeling that a lot of people say they feel, we're going to apply it to dating and relationships. Um, But I'm going to give you some science. I'm going to talk a little nerdy, a little geeky about some science as to why it can be very difficult for us to grow and change. And the thing is, it's necessary, right? Because as the saying goes, the only constant is change. Things are going to change, and we need to figure out how to gracefully handle that and not freak out, not resist. Dr. Wayne Dyer used to say, what we resist persists. That is so true. You're making it harder for yourself that when things are changing and things will change, that when you resist them, it just simply makes it that much harder for you. You know, it really ramps up your emotions. It just makes it that much harder. So I like to help people in this area, especially as a therapist, to to manage change and, and things, transitions in their life, to manage those things gracefully because they're going to happen. You know, things are going to happen in life that we don't want, that we did not expect, But it's how we're managing them, how we're handling them that's really, really important. So the first thing I want to tell you is that your brain, your thousands and thousands of year old brain, it wants to protect you. It wants to protect you at every turn. And so you have your subconscious mind. That's the mind that is subjective and it basically runs everything in our body on automatic. Okay, and so this is something called the homeostatic impulse that states that it wants to keep us in our comfort zone. It wants everything to kind of run automatically. We don't have to think about breathing. We don't have to think about our heart pumping. Um, And so things just happen. Lots of things. It's believed that like 90% of everything we're doing in a day is happening on a subconscious level due to this homeostatic impulse. So all the the ways that we know how to drive and brush our teeth and you know all the things we know how to do we don't really consciously think about those things those things just happen and so that's our subconscious mind 
and it wants to keep us in a the most familiar state that it can and it does that job by cataloging and remembering lots and lots and lots of memories millions of memories on how to do things and that way we don't have to consciously think about how to drive every time we get in the car we just remember how to do that so it obeys right it just does what it needs to do so that we can clear out extra space for the things that may be new like when we get into a new environment or let's say you go on a trip and you land in a city you've never been in before, you have to activate a part of your brain. That's why I always encourage people who are going through breakups to take a trip because it has to activate a part of your brain to think about where you are, how do you get from the airport to the hotel, you know, where things are, you've never seen any of this stuff before, all of this stuff is new. And so it kind of puts to bed the bad feelings that you're having uh, with your breakup. You know, it just gives your brain a little bit of a rest from the breakup and feeling bad and feeling awful because now this other part of your brain has to be activated to figure out where it is, where it's going, what it's doing, and all that good stuff. So that's your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is handling things that you need your conscious mind to handle and I, I want to encourage people to use your conscious mind when you are talking and responding to people that you're not just, you know, blurting out things without thinking about them. Um, I believe the conscious mind is helping us to regulate our emotions when we become more mature, that we actively uh, realize when we're upset, when someone said or done something to upset us, and instead of throwing things, breaking things, screaming and yelling, we're going, okay, I'm going to remain calm right now. I'm not going to respond to this situation. At least that's what I'm hoping is happening. But the conscious mind makes commands on us. It says, do this, do that, pick up this. You need to go there. You need to do this, you know it is actively engaged in things that it needs to be engaged in, okay? Um, but our mind, our brain, it relies on what is familiar. And, and this can hurt us. This can hurt us in some ways. This is how we're going to apply this to dating and relationships. So for instance, for the woman out there who continues to date the same type of guy over and over, your subconscious mind has has had that imprinted on you and unfortunately you would think your subconscious mind would imprint on you hey this guy treated me really bad or this type of guy don't go in that direction again but instead it imprints on you when you see that coming again it says hmm that's familiar like i remember i remember that let me go in that direction because see it wants you to go in a direction that is familiar that you recognize that's the sub that's the subconscious brain it wants to kind of keep you stuck it wants to keep you in your comfort zone of that feels familiar and so even if that familiar is bad right if 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 you dated a guy when you were in high school who was very angry who was very physically aggressive, who was violent, who was, you know, just, just degrading to you, and you get out of that relationship, there is a high chance that you could stumble upon when you go to college or after someone else like him. Because to your subconscious mind, it's familiar. It's something that feels familiar to you. And so you go in that direction over and over and over. And so that's when I have to really help my ladies to understand we've got to break that cycle. We've got to fight against that impulse to keep us stuck, to keep us in this comfort zone of I am being mistreated. I'm being treated poorly and I'm just going along with it because it's familiar. No, I want you to have something better than that. I want you to have something good. 
And here's, here's the funny thing. Something good will feel weird. It'll feel weird to you because it's unfamiliar. So you don't have a point of reference for it like the bad treatment. And so I've seen this play out. I've seen it play out in my life. I've seen it play out in other women's lives where they continue to choose the guy who's not good for them, who's got anger issues, who's got cheating issues. He's got some kind of issues, right? And part of that is there's a familiarity there with one of our parents. So he reminds us of mom or dad in some way. And that's, again, feels very familiar because these are the people we were raised with. This is how they treated us. But then, you know, for us to be attracted to them, they have to be a little unlike our parents. So not exactly like our parents. So they're a little like our parents. They're a little unlike our parents, whether it's mom or dad. And we go in the direction of what feels familiar. And so even when it is toxic, even when it is negative, even when it doesn't serve us, that part of our brain just wants to go down that path because it's like, I remember this. I have a point of reference for this. And so I'm going to keep bringing you in that direction, even though that direction isn't good. So we have to step into our conscious mind. We have to say very, you know, very with certain I'm not going in that direction it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how it feels I, it doesn't matter my point of reference it doesn't matter if I remember dealing with this before I am going to consciously make a choice to not go in that direction and that will feel scary because that's the homeostatic impulse it wants to keep us in our comfort zone and when you try to go in a different direction it almost signals that fight or flight response like, oh, this is scary. You don't know what's on the other side of this. You don't know what what's going to happen here. You don't know what dating this good guy is really going to be like. Don't do it. This over here, you know. But, you know, going in this direction with this guy who's not, you know, screaming at you and hitting you and cursing at you and cheating on you, we don't know where that's going. And... We have to make a conscious effort to grow. We have to check in with ourselves regularly. We have to say, what's going on here? And is this serving me? If I'm choosing this over and over, is this, is this a good thing? Is this really serving me in my life? We have to do this work. And it has to be intentional because your subconscious mind I mean, it will have you do the same thing over and over, which is complete madness. But because it's familiar to you, you'll you'll keep doing that. And you'll say, well, you know, and then when it keeps turning out the same way it always turns out, you know, you'll grow more and more frustrated. But believe it or not, even pain, even going through pain over and over does not keep us from going in that same direction, which is fascinating to me. Um, but I know it to be true. I've seen it play out in my own life. It's like I, I always teach my ladies, you are not going to have sex outside of marriage or outside of exclusivity and commitment. You're not going to do that, period, anymore. And your flesh, your body, that man or whoever else, your friends who are telling you, oh my God, if you don't do it, someone else will. Or if you don't do it, you're going to lose him. Or, oh, I really want to do it. I want, I really want to be gratified right now in my flesh. And, you know, all of that's unfamiliar. Because in your mind, okay, but, you know, I've been dating quite a while. And I've slept with all the men that I've dated. And I wasn't married to them. Or maybe I wasn't in a committed, exclusive relationship with them. But I want you to ask yourself, how did it turn out? Like, how, how is it working? And yet many of us will say, it's not working. It is not working out. I'm not meeting my husband. I'm not having a long-standing, loving, healthy relationship. It doesn't work out. And then the next guy comes along and here we go. This feels familiar. This is what I did before. And even though it didn't work out, we do it again. We do it again. It's insane. But we've got to put that 
kind of put that pencil in the spoke of that wheel to stop this, to say, no, this is not working out and I need to go in the other direction. I need to stretch outside of my comfort zone and explore this new territory, which is I am not sleeping with any more men that I am not married to, that I'm not exclusive and committed with. I'm not doing that. I don't care what my flesh says. I don't care what anyone else says. I don't care what he says. I'm not doing that because it has not worked out for me. And guess what, brain? You know, you're sitting here trying to protect me, but really you're not. You're keeping me stuck. You're keeping me stuck in an unhealthy pattern that isn't good for me. So sometimes you gotta, that conscious part of you has got to take over that subconscious part of you, okay? You've got to rewire your brain, retrain your brain, and you can. That neuroplasticity, it's proven that you can rewire and retrain your brain. It's going to require intentionality on your part in order to do that. But there is no part of us inside of us that although it wants to do something different, it wants to lose weight, it wants to start running, it wants to um, start working on our goals, or it wants to open that business. There's all these things it wants to go back to school, all these things that it wants to do, right? But there's no cheerleader in us. There's no part of us that's going to be like, yeah, today's the day. We're going to do this and I'm going to, you know, wake you up at 5 a.m. every morning to go running or I'm going to do this. It isn't going to happen. It is not going to happen. You need to decide. And that's what you're doing with the conscious part of your brain. You've got to be intentional. Here's a transparent story. So nine days ago, I decided to finally deal with the addiction that I have to sugar. I have a sugar addiction. I admit it. And this has been going on for the most of my life. Um, it's getting to the point where I don't like it because I just don't like the idea of feeling controlled by something or feeling like I have to do this thing. I have to eat this candy bar. Or I have to, you know, I just don't like it. And so I was praying and I feel as though God told me, you know, you need to have more discipline. You need to have more discipline in your life. You need to decide you're going to put that down. And so I prayed for strength. I prayed that once I decided that I was going to walk that out, I was going to walk in the direction of what I decided to do, which is give up sugar. So nine days, I am nine days in to a low to no carb, but I have not had a cookie, a cake, a donut, a brownie, a piece of candy for nine days. And that, I mean, that has always been a struggle for me. And what's even more amazing is every single day that goes by, I feel like I am moving away from that being who I am. I can feel the change happening. I can feel it. And yes, my brain is freaking out. Every time I eat something savory or have dinner, my brain immediately goes, where's dessert? What are we having? What's going on? What, you know, it just starts scanning. It starts scanning the kitchen. It starts scanning, right? And it wants to eat something sweet. And I'm like, no, that's not happening. We're not doing that. And I may have a piece of, you know, uh, cinnamon gum. That's what you can have for your craving. So I may have a piece of cinnamon gum. And then that's it. And then, you know, that's it. It's, it's on to the next. And I just go in the direction of what I've decided. And so people have lots of um, reasons why they may want to change something. And I do think having a reason why is important. I think it's important that the change not be solely based on pain and, and something very negative, that if we could base the change on something positive. So it's kind of like, don't worry about what you're losing, focus more on what you're gaining. And that's what I'm focused on. So I'm not focused on not being able to eat any of the sweets that I love. I'm really focused on, you know, losing weight. I'm focused on um, more energy. I'm focused on, um, you know, getting my gut down. You know, I'm focused on all that stuff, right? Um, 
and just not feeling so controlled by something, some food or something out there outside of me that I get to control me. I get to tell me what I do and what I eat and when I eat it and all of that. And I feel just better about myself. And more than anything, I was reading up a couple weeks back about self-betrayal and I realized that was something that I was doing. I was making promises to myself that I wasn't keeping. And that started to bleed over into other areas of my life. And I couldn't really feel good about that. So I was like, you know what? I am deciding. I am deciding and making a decision for me. I am promising myself this and I am sticking to it. And that has helped me even in other areas of my life. You know, just being able to decide and stick with it and, and not betraying myself. It helps me even with doing things for other people. So this thing with the change, you know, why it is so hard, that familiar versus unfamiliar. We do this all the time in dating and relationships. It is the reason why a lot of women will date the same type of bad guy, the same type of man that is not good for you. But you have got to wake up and truly decide. You've got to wake up one day and say, I'm done with this. This is, this is, you know, I cannot do this over and over. This is leading me to the same place over and over. And I'm tired of it. I'm going to go in a different direction. It will feel weird. Let me tell you. I know when I finally broke out of my type of guy, it felt so weird. It was like just odd because I, I had a type. That's what I liked. That's what I dated. But I also got the same results with that type of man over and over and over. So I said, you know what? I've got to jump out of my comfort zone. I've got to date someone I would not normally date. I would not normally give the time of day. I did. And it felt very odd. It felt just not unnatural. But I needed to have that experience. And this can also explain why we get into relationships and we get comfortable. We get comfortable. We stop doing the things. What do I always say? We stop doing the things that gained our partner's interest in the first place. We stop pursuing. We stop taking care of ourselves. We stop doing all the things that we did that showed our love and our care. We settle into a comfort zone. And I'm telling you, and especially now, especially now with people having so many choices, that's a dangerous game that you're playing. You get into a relationship and you just, you know, get all into your comfort zone and you stop, you know, all the little niceties. Women, you stop cooking. You stop looking nice, smelling nice. You know, you stop doing the things you were doing, the, 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 the rubs and all that stuff. Stopping all that. Mm. You know, it's, it's a dangerous game because now people have so many choices and they're online and they're on Facebook and Instagram and looking at all these other people. And then they start thinking about, wow, well, you know, my girl doesn't do this or that anymore. Or the ladies, I hear it all the time. My guy doesn't bring home flowers. He doesn't compliment me. He, we don't go out. We don't do anything. We barely sit on the couch and barely touch each other. You have got to make a conscious, intentional effort to resist this impulse to just stay in this comfort zone or fall in and stay in this comfort zone. You've got, like I always say, the relationship for me is the relationship where I get up every day and my partner gets up every day and we say, either out loud or I think, how can I make this person happy? How can I contribute to this person's happiness? What can I do today to make this person smile? What can I do today to make this person feel really good about themselves, about us and our relationship? You know, what can I do? And it could be small. Dr. Gottman says that it's really the little things. It's the little things that mean so much. It's not the big things. It's not the big diamonds. It's not the trips. It's not, you know, the, the buying of the car and all that stuff. It's really the little things. It's the keeping quiet, you know, it's the picking up your partner's towel and putting it in the hamper. It's the, it's really the little things that mean a lot. 
and the little niceties, you know, and going outside if it's cold and heating up her car or, um, you know, it's the, it's the little things or starting the coffee or bringing coffee. It really is. So this is a part of you that has to use your conscious mind. You can't use your subconscious because it's busy doing a thousand other things and it wants to stay in this like, this comfort zone. And that's gonna get you in trouble in your relationship. Your relationship's gonna grow old and stale and you know where that leads. So really make a conscious effort with this. I mean, your brain, wants to keep you safe it and that's why when things come up that are that are new or different or scary your brain's going to resist it because it's sold one of its sole jobs is to try to keep you safe but i need you in your conscious mind to say okay my partner and i you know my partner came to me and wants me to attend this couple's workshop and i don't want to do that I don't know those people. I don't know who's going to be in there. I don't want to sit in there all day and learn all these ways to communicate and how to resolve conflict. All that's scary to me. I didn't come from that kind of family. I didn't come from all that touchy-feely. Okay, I get it. And so you're going to resist that or you're going to, you know, you're not going to respond. You're going to procrastinate setting it up. And all the while, your partner's like, look, we really need to work on this. We need to work on these skills. We need to communicate better. We need to resolve our conflict. We need to try to understand each other. We need to have some sort of shared goals and shared meaning. And you just feel like, okay, well, you know, we're in this relationship and we're fine. We don't need to do any work. I mean, that's a dangerous place. That's a dangerous place to be in relationships die every day. I want to say a relationship probably dies every 10 minutes because somebody doesn't want to do the work. Somebody doesn't want to stretch outside of their comfort zone and do the work and intentionally be in this relationship. Somebody, dare I say it, doesn't want to grow. Somebody doesn't want to change. I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm talking to the ladies and the gentlemen. Both of you have been guilty of this, this not wanting to grow and not wanting to change. But that is a part of a healthy, happy, long-term relationship. It is absolutely necessary that you grow and that you change. And I know change can be a dirty word. A lot of people want to believe that when you get in a relationship with someone that, oh, I shouldn't have to change. This person's trying to change me. Don't change me. I shouldn't have to change. Love me this way or leave me. Okay, then keep doing some of the negative things you're doing and you're probably going to get left. Okay? I'm just, I'm just keeping it 100. You're going to get left because relationships are reciprocal. They require growth and change all the time. If you get married at 25 and you plan on staying married for 50 years, that's a lot of growing and changing. You've got jobs, you've got homes, you've got kids and kids grow up. Kids go, kids go into middle school and then high school, then they go to college. You've got all these things happening. Your bodies are changing. Um, all kinds of things are happening and you've got to adapt You've got to be willing to adapt to that. You can't be so stuck and so rigid that, no, you know, this is what worked for me 20 years ago and this is what worked for me. It's not working for you. So be open to growing and changing. I know it can be difficult. As I just explained, your brain is going to fight you every inch of the way. But when you're in dating and relationships, when you're in love, it's absolutely necessary. It's how you're going to keep your partner fulfilled and happy. It's how you're going to keep your relationship healthy. You both have to grow and change. And there's lots of negotiating. I help couples all the time negotiate how this growth and change is going to look. And... We make a, we come in and negotiate, then they may live with it for a while, then we have to renegotiate. That renegotiation is constantly happening. It is never static. And do you know why? Because people are never static. We're never like, okay, this is it. 
my that's, that's like saying my hair is never going to grow my skin is never going to shed you know we're constantly changing our cells are turning over and guess what people may you know what they wanted a year ago may not be what they want today you it's your prerogative to grow and change it's your prerogative to change your mind but you've got to be willing to roll with that. You've got to be open to this process of growing and changing, especially if you want to have a happy, healthy, long-standing relationship. So I am off of my soapbox, but I am really passionate about this. It's one of the things that I often tell people, it is a deal breaker for me in a relationship in the sense of, I don't want to be in a stale, ambivalent, complacent relationship. There is nothing that is worse to me. Um, I had a girlfriend of mine where we were talking about, you know, what are some of the things that could cause us to end a relationship or what are some of the deal breakers? And for her, it's cheating, right? Cheating is her thing. That's her trigger. For me, it is complacency. For me, it is a person who will not grow and change. I cannot maintain a healthy relationship with someone who refuses to grow and change. They want to do the same thing, especially the same thing that does not work over and over and over. I can't do it. So it's important to your relationship. I know for a fact that the couples I do work with, that their relationship is good and healthy. They've been married a long time. They're satisfied in their marriage. This is a big part of it. They tell me all the time, the men tell me, oh, my wife has been like eight different women in the last 20 years. And they roll with that. They flow with that. They adapt to that. And the wife says about her husband, yeah, he's had different jobs and he's had different you know, businesses and we've lived in different places. And then our kids went through all these different changes and I just rolled with it. I just adapted every time. I. I made sure to change every time that these changes occurred. I didn't resist it. I didn't push back and try to keep things the same. It just made things harder. And that is so true. It's just going to make things harder. So be a good transition person. Like learn how to adapt. Learn how to grow and change based on the needs of your partner, based on your needs. Be open to that because people will grow and change. I mean, I, my kids are a perfect exam, example of that. I have three children, and man, have, when I tell you they have grown and changed. They had favorite foods when they were a certain age, then it became this. Now, you know, once my son was obsessed with su sweetened iced tea, now he only drinks water. So it's like grow, change, adapt, right? So I don't even buy that anymore because I'm like, yeah, he doesn't drink that anymore. My daughter went through the whole, you know, I like this and that type of food. Now she's gluten-free or she can't have this or she can't have that. I just adapt. I just adapt. So now I buy gluten-free stuff. I buy, you know, we make all this keto stuff and different stuff. So I'm like, okay. But you have to be willing in your relationship to grow and change. That is, that is a huge part of having a happy, healthy long-term relationship. So I'm, I'm now officially off of my soapbox. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, ladies, if you want to know more about my 30 Days to Mastering Your Feminine Power course, that is my signature course in teaching ladies everything they need to know on how to be a classy, feminine, feel-good lady. Uh, how to master your feminine power, how to become magnetically attractive to the opposite sex, uh, how to really boost your confidence and your self-esteem, how to feel good, right? That course is on the Udemy platform and you can find the link below. Um, you can find the link in the show notes. You can find the link if you're listening on YouTube in the notes on YouTube. But head on over to Udemy, give that course a whirl. If you put in the coupon code BETTERLOVE5, that's the number five, you can get $5 off of that course. And I believe that course is on sale right now, so it should be like super affordable. Um, but head on over to the Udemy platform, 
check out that course. I am actually working on my next course right now, all about uh, online dating and how to use your feminine power skills in online dating. Because I know a lot of people are doing this. A lot of people are going online to meet people. And there is a feminine power way to online dating. And I would love to teach it to you. So I'm going to let you know as soon as that course is completed. If you have a question that you'd like to have answered on the podcast, please send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. I love getting your emails and your questions and your name is kept, you know, uh, anonymous. So we don't say that. But if you want, if you have a question or a concern or something that you want help with, please send that to me. Uh, it's so helpful if you rate and review the podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all so much. But thank you for listening. And remember to stay open to love.